digital versus film photography. I shoot on a digital camera. I have a Canon R5, that's what I'm shooting this on. I absolutely love it. But there's just something that is so spectacular about the way that film photography looks. Now, even though I shoot strictly on digital, a lot of the inspiration that I've been receiving recently has come from some of my favorite photographers who shoot on film. Their images really have this kind of beautiful, nostalgic feel that I really like to try and recreate in my own photography. And because shooting on film requires not only the skill set of knowing how to do that, it also requires going and getting your film processed, which can quickly add up to a lot of money. I want to try and give you guys a way to take your digital photographs and recreate that for yourselves. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the film look really can be split up into six basic components. The first of these being your overall image contrast. What I like to do is take the highlight slider and bring it down, and that's gonna bring a lot of detail back into the highlights of your images, like the sky. Take the shadow slider and bring it up, and that's gonna bring some detail back into your face, your subject, and really just even out the entire image. You also want to recreate this with your white and your black points. What I do with my whites is I either leave it towards the middle, maybe bring it up a tiny bit just to add some pop back into the image, or I end up bringing it down to remove uh, some of the brighter parts of the image again. Generally what I'll do is I'll take my blacks, which just affects the darkest part of the image, and bring it up a little bit so that they blend in with my shadows more and create uh, more of a smoother overall look to the image. The second way that you're gonna achieve uh, an overall film look is gonna be in your presence panel down here. When you shoot digital, you end up having these uh, this sharp, crisp look to your image. With film, since you're shooting onto a natural piece of film, which is capturing the light, you end up having this overall softness to your image. If you're going for more of a clean commercial look, you may want this sharpening in your image. But if you want the filmic look, you actually wanna remove some of the sharpening to bring that softness back. So you're just gonna take your texture slider and bring it down. Don't go too dramatic with this or else you're gonna lose all the detail. I like to go around negative eight to negative 12. And then you're gonna go down to your clarity and bring that down as well. Finally, for the last part of softening, you're gonna remove a little bit of dehaze, which is also the same thing as adding haze to your image. That's just gonna bloom your highlights a little bit and give your whole image a smooth, nostalgic, filmic look. Another tip here that isn't really necessary is just adding some vibrance into your image. You can bring it all the way up to see what, what areas of the image it's affecting. So in this, with my vibrance, you can see it's affecting a lot of the blues in the back. And then just kind of drag it back down until you get to a spot that you're happy with. Now onto the tone curve. This is one of the most important parts for really achieving that film look. What you want to do here is create a smooth highlight and shadow roll off. I'm just going to draw a few points on this line. So you want to do three points kind of evenly spaced out in the middle and then one at the top and one at the bottom for your whites and your blacks. And you're just gonna come up to this top point and drag it down. Don't go too dramatic. You see if you pull it way down, what happens is it starts to look kind of weird. What this does is it takes the white points and brings them down so that they blend in with the highlights. Then with the blacks, you're gonna do the same thing. So you're gonna grab this low point and instead of moving it down, you're gonna move it up. So that's gonna take the darkest parts of your image, the blacks, and it's gonna blend those in with the shadows. It just smooths out the general lighting curve of your shot. That brings me into my next tip, which is gonna be down in the color grading panel. This is where you can really isolate the different parts of your image, the highlights, midtones, and shadows, and push different color tones into them to create a really cool overall look. When you're shooting on different pieces, pieces of film, they have different color profiles. So one way that I like to try and recreate that is by taking my highlight slider and adding some yellow into the highlights, which really gives it kind of this nostalgic feel. And then taking some green and putting a little bit of green into the shadows. Now once I do this, you then want to take your midtones, which is where your skin tones will generally live, and push some orange into that. So that'll bring some color back into your subject and make it look a little bit more natural. But play around with this, see what feels best for you. This is where you can really develop a stylized look. So if you want something that's really unique and has a really cool look to it, you can add a little more color into the areas to see what you like, or you can keep it minimal and just add a little bit. But this also creates some separation in your image because you're adding different colors to different parts. And so 
it creates some more depth that helps separate your background from your foreground and really just makes it look more stylized. For step number five, we're gonna go down into the effects tab. Really, there's only two things you can add here, which are gonna be vignetting and grain, both pretty important parts of achieving the film look. So vignette, what I like to do is have it set to highlight priority here. You're gonna take this amount slider and bring it down. Don't go too drastic with it. Usually I like to live around negative 10, negative 15, and you can bring up the feathering to smooth that out a little bit. When you're shooting with vintage lenses, lots of times what happens is you'll get this natural vignetting, which is a darkness around the outside areas of your image. It really draws your viewer's eye towards the center. Now down to grain. One of the most important parts of a film image, it's a pretty crucial component. Depending on what type of film you're shooting on, it's gonna have natural grain characteristics kind of embedded into it. When you're shooting on digital, you don't have any of this. So you just have a very clean, crisp image, which can make it look more processed. So bringing some grain into this can make it look a lot more natural and really ties together the whole film look. Feel free to adjust the amount and size to achieve your desired effect. If you want a lot more grain, uh, you can bump up the, the amount to 60 or 70 even. Now on for the final tip, tip number six, which is halation. So this is the only one that's actually gonna be outside of Lightroom. And the reason for this is there isn't really a way to add halation within Lightroom currently. So what I did was I went and created a plugin for uh, Photoshop, which I'm gonna give to you guys completely free. And you can just drag your image in there and manually adjust how much halation you want to it. To do this, you can either export your photo from Lightroom and then bring it in, or you can bring it into Photoshop directly from Lightroom. You just right click on the image and go to edit in and then edit in Adobe Photoshop. And if you go into the description of this video, I've got a link to go and download my elation effect. I already typed out the directions on how to use it and placed it here so that you guys can just follow along with these to, to keep things simple. It's a very faint effect, but it just really ties the whole thing together and gives it kind of a cool aesthetic. So there you have it. Now you can see the before and the after of our original digital image and our finalized film stylistic image. I'd love to see you guys put this to use. Go ahead and try it out on your photography. Post it, tag me in it. I'd love to see how these turn out. If there's any tutorials that you guys would like to see, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll try to get them in. Good luck and cheers.